Welcome to Women of the World, a show which gives a voice to women from around the world who have chosen to make the United States their home. Our show believes in the principles written on and enshrined by the Statue of Liberty. Here's today's moderator, Anne McKenna. Hello, viewers. Welcome to Women of the World show. My name is Anne McKenna. I am the moderator today. I have the pleasure to introduce an amazing guest. She has a very interesting immigration story to share with us. But first, I would like to take a moment and introduce our co-hosts to the show today. I will actually have them introduce to themselves. Mm -hmm. Hello, I'm Don Tomlinson, and I love being here today. I'm Gloria Van Demel Trott, and I'm delighted, can't wait to hear about our guest today. Well, thanks for being here. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. And now, I have the pleasure to introduce Nadia Giordana. She's our guest to the studio and is going to share with us the story of her mom's immigration into United States. Hi, Nandia. Hi, I'm so happy to be here in this chair today. Once in a while, I'm a co-host on the other side, mm -hmm. and that's so much fun. But it's fun to be right here today to share my mom's story. That's amazing. And it sounds like it's such an exciting, interesting, scary, all those things put together. So would you please start by sharing with us how old were you when you, when you came to United States? How old was your mother? What were those circumstances? I was only a month old and uh, I'm considered a derivative citizen, which they don't even have anymore. They have new words for mm -hmm for that, but my father was a GI and he married my mother. My mother was uh, um, a displaced person after the war. They met in Gorizia, Italy, and that's part of what I talk with my mother about on the videotape, which we'll be showing in a little bit, is uh, bits about her early childhood and then uh, her crossing that border to leave war-torn Slovenia. And people don't oh. even know that there was an occupation there and that no. they had troubles there enough to flee from. But they did, and she did. Uh -huh. And this is so nice to be able to have her share her story. I heard yes, these stories yeah. when she was a child, when I was a child. Mm -hmm and I'm hearing them now again from her. Which border exactly did she cross? Where was it, if you can tell it's us? It's the Italian border. There's a town called Gorizia, and there's another town called Nova Gorizia. That's the same town, and it's on both sides of Slovenia and Gorizia. Oh. And that's, that's the town where I was born, but that's the road that mm -hmm. came down through there where the border oh, okay. was blocked. And how old was she when she when she did oh, this? She was a teenager. I'm not sure her when she crossed, I'm not sure, but it was the war was it was real close to the end, but the war was still going on. Oh my. Was she alone or was she with someone when she All crossed? All by herself. My word. Alone. And what inspired her to do this? And this is well, incredible. a lot of things had happened and there, there was there was conflict and fighting and uh, uh, the families had to leave their little town when the soldiers, the SS, would come through and hide in the hills every time that would happen. And a couple of times they didn't have a chance to hide and were caught in the middle of the conflict. Did she leave behind her family? She did leave behind her family, her mother and her brothers, and, and one sister was already gone, but her mother and her brothers she had to leave behind, yeah. Oh, that's so brave. Well, the, int the intriguing thing is a teenage girl crossing the border, mm -hmm. and you are saying that it was dangerous. Yes. Well, yes, she had no papers, so they would have either put her in jail or whatever they did in those days or uh, shot her. What she expected was to be shot. She said, I, 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 if they shoot me, they shoot me. I asked her as a child, I said, why did you go across? And she said, well, I had to. Uh, she said, I would be hurt staying or I would be hurt crossing. She said, I had to take the chance. Was she in school at that time? She didn't get much schooling because of the, the poor situation. Her mother was poor, her father had died. 
So she only had a second grade education. She was farmed out as a little child, and she, I don't think she talks about that in this interview, but to work for local families, and they were supposed to send her to school, but they didn't. Oh. So, so they were using her for child labor, really. Yeah, it was, mm -hmm. it was, mm -hmm. yeah. Was she able to continue her schooling then when she got to Italy? Uh, no, not very much because she was a young adult and, you know, it was post-war and all the things that happened. And then, of course, oh, eventually wow. she became a mother. Hello. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And that got in the way, but uh, uh, so not very much. How brave she was. Yes. I, I think that about was. that yeah. and, and what, so she was aware of how terrible and how dire the situations uh -huh. were at that yeah. time. But to, to have the gumption to go alone. Yeah. Wow. It, it's, Where it's, her, were her parents at that time? Her father was dead, and her mother was at home and understood. You know, she just said, I have to go, I have to leave. Her mother understood because of all the things that were happening. Oh, yeah. okay. It's such inspiration because I think so often times we get caught in fear mm -hmm. and get mm -hmm. paralyzed instead mm -hmm. of taking the step like she did. She said, if I stay, I'm going to get hurt. Yeah. And if I go, I'm going to yeah. get hurt. So I'm going to mm -hmm. go where there's a chance. <laughs> yes. anyway. I, I love it. Yeah. It's so inspiring. Yeah, very true. What a courageous woman. So um, what is your mom doing now? She just recently moved in with me. Of course, she's had a long and uh, happy life with my father who uh, uh, it took her to Alaska for part of their life, but he passed away a year and a half or so ago. So she's been living yeah. in her own home up until just recently. Now she's living with me, and, mm -hmm. and it's been just a delight for me. How wonderful yeah. for the two of you to, to connect and, and mm -hmm. be together to, to yeah. talk just about these things. Just hanging out is what we're doing yeah. lately. And I, you have recorded this story. Yes. So it would be nice to hear it. So um, let's hear that story now. And to our viewers, we are going to turn and listen to this amazing story, and we will be back in the show. Let's talk about your childhood. You were born in... In, it, in Italy. Italy. Well, I was uh, born in Italy. You were born yes, in... Yes, that was Italy where I was born. In, in, in at the, that... And in a part I was born in Slovenia. Yeah. Uh, it was Italy then. In 1927. 1927. Oh, okay, so the borders changed from yes. time to time. Yes. All right. I've always thought of it as Slovenia and no. Yugoslavia, no. but it was actually Italy at the time. It was actually Italy, and later during the war, you know, with Germany, and. Slovenia and all, all that, uh, it turned into Yugoslavia. Mm -hmm. And after that, when the born, border changed, then, you know, they got straightened out. And uh, uh, it comes Slovenia. Yeah, which is what it is today. It's what it is today. Yeah. Well, and when when you were a child, what was the what was your childhood like before the war years? Well, we were poor. My mom was a widow. She had uh, five kids to raise, and of course, my dad. She, uh, it was old and. He was sick all the time, so. He was older, wasn't he? He it was an arranged uh, marriage, uh, he was older. Oh yeah, I think 16 years older, or mm -hmm. older, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, so she had to provide for the food for the kids. Now, like my sister, she went, my aunt and uncle took her and put it through schooling and all that. And uh, of course, she had other kids, you know, she had you no know, me. And well, we were about five or six kids. And uh, <clears throat> you no, know, she didn't, she raised the food what she could, but mm -hmm. you know, like corn for, uh, 
the cornmeal or wheat, you know, for the white flour. So she had to go around, I remember now, that uh, I walked with her and have a little sack. And we went like, well, bagging, that's mm -hmm. what it was. Yeah. And, you know, for house to house. And there they give you a, a year of corn or a, a fistful of beans, you know, or wheat, whatever it is. And we had, I had a little bag to go in the back of my back. And, and Mom, too, she had a bigger bag. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And uh, so, but that's how she provided for uh, us so she could have the food. And after we gathered all that, we went to the uh, grain meal to take the grain, all that stuff, mm -hmm. and took it home. And then, well, she cooked it, you know, for us kids. And it was uh, three boys and two girls to raise. Well, later on, there was the war years yes. and the occupation, and a lot of things happened during that time. At some point, you crossed the border into Italy without papers. Tell us a little bit about how that came about and what you okay. did. Okay, well, <coughs> uh, they, there was a fight in that night. Uh, with Germany and uh, Yugoslavia stuff, you know, soldiers, I don't know what. Oh, what. at the point when you were at the border? No, not yet. Oh, okay. That was later. And, uh, of course, uh, during the night, everyone scattered, you know. My mom was wounded. She had a, a Chris line bullet shot. She, it wasn't her, but they parted her hair. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, so at that time I decided to cross the border and uh, left up there my own home in Lokwa and walked down through. There was a little trail that they went down to the highway. And of course, when I came down lower in Italy, I didn't walk on a, no uh, little trails or anything because there was uh, German soldiers all around. But I took the highway on open and walked down the middle and walked through the border. And of course, lo and behold, when I came to the border, you know, they have a post set there and nobody was around. Weren't you afraid? Well, sure, but mm -hmm. what you're going to do? Mm -hmm. You're going to get hurt if you stay. You're going to get hurt if you go. Mm -hmm. And so I decided, well, I'm going to risk it. <clears throat> and so I did. And I walked through the border. It was a post setting that the across like that and from the Yugoslavia part into the Italy and that's where the Germans were at that time and and nobody said anything nobody stopped me I just crossed the border the posts and into Italy and I was inside of the Italian the German side and I just stopped for a second I didn't want to set stay around. I looked around. I seen the movement inside of the building. They had all the bags toward me. And, uh, well, in my mind, I said, Sylvia, you better move. You better move. So I just walked. I walked through the posts and out and then I didn't hear anything. I didn't turn around or anything and just walked and walked and walked for a long ways till I couldn't see anything back of me. And I got, well, I was into the Italian, the German occupation part. 
and uh, you had a sister on in Italy that you knew you could go yes, to. Yes, I got a sister, uh, an older sister, Francesca. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was there, and uh, I walked there, and of course, uh, when I got into the city, Gorizia, there it was soldiers all around walking around and all different. Uh, shape for me, you know. Well, anyway, I kept going, kept going, and I uh, come. My sister had an apartment. Uh, it was a hill, and on top of it was a castle, and down below the castle was houses. Mm -hmm. So that's where she, a low ground, she had an apartment. So I got there, knocked and she didn't open the door right away. And so I started talking, finally she did, and that's how I got there in Italy and stayed. So you were in Italy then for uh, a while before you met uh, your husband, Norman Wilkins. Yes. Tell us about that and subsequently uh, how you got to the United States. Okay, well, I, uh, at that time, you know, all the, uh, the girls there in Gorizia, every Saturday, uh, well, not every Saturday. Once a month, uh, the Red Cross came and on a place there they had for the pick up the girls for dancing, and they went up to the uh, mountains where uh, Dad was posted and uh, for dancing. So that's, I uh, didn't went right away the first time the girls went, but later I did, and I didn't know anybody at that time. Well, uh, all my girlfriends had a boyfriend, and uh, well, we went to dancing, and I went there, and I just sat there on a bench. They had a bench, and there was a table that was a bunch of GIs, and they were drinking beer and, I remember, Coke. And, uh, of course, I didn't, have, didn't know anybody. I sat on a bench on the side, and uh, then after a bit, uh, one of the GIs, uh, come and ask me to dance. So I went, it was a Walt, and he was a pretty good dancer, and at that time I loved to dance. And of course we danced a couple dances, and he came back and uh, danced again with me. And then at that time, uh, we were dancing, and oh, he, twirled me around and bent me down real low and gave me a sloppy kiss. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't like it, so I pulled back and gave him a slap. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I went sit down on a bench. Then after that, I didn't... Uh, <laughs> I slapped everybody away. <laughs> So I just sat there and sat there, and all the girls had a uh, boyfriend, and they were all in where Dad was stationed. So in a little bit, everyone was dancing. Uh, Dad come and ask me if I want to sit down at their table with my girlfriends. I said, yes. So this was Norman? Yeah. This that, was Norman. Norman. And uh, he asked me if I uh, want a beer. No, I said, I don't want no beer. He didn't drink beer, but he, yeah, he drank beer. 
And, uh, well, I said, well, he said, you're going to take a Coke? Yeah, I said, I'll take a Coke. Uh, so we sat around, and he didn't dance very good. <laughs> he Just never kinda, did, did he? <laughs> yeah, he, he never really danced very good. But. So that's how we met, and... Uh, and then we just talked, and then after the dance, all the, of course, the uh, GIs wasn't supposed to leave the post, but they sneaked out and followed the girls in the bus, <laughs> you know, sitting there. And so th he did, and he gave me a kiss, and then they left, you know, and then he come the next. Obviously, that kiss you like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he must have. <laughs> Next Saturday came, and so on every Saturday then. You know, I was going up there, and he come to pick me up, and, and yeah. And then but, eventually, you two were married. Eventually. And, uh, we and, were married. Yeah, and then, we, uh, uh, well... We were, well, that was all in, uh, I can't remember, well, it doesn't, doesn't matter the date, but anyway, yeah, that's how we met, and eventually uh, we got married, uh, we got married over there, and uh, of course at that time it, it used to be that uh, the wives of the Jais follow them right away, but they just a, a month later, I mean before, they stopped that. So I couldn't follow and couldn't go with him when he left. Mm -hmm. So uh, he left and, well, of course, I was pregnant with you. Mm -hmm. So you see, now, you know, even that, if he wanted to get out of it, I had two marriage certificates and he probably couldn't how get out that, of it. How did it? <laughs> I had one May 10th and the other one was July 28th marriage certificate. I still got both of them. <laughs> and you got married first when you were overseas still? Yes, in church, yeah. in Catholic church. And then when you were back here, Justice of the Peace. And, and what was the reason for having the second marriage? The second marriage was the reason Norman's mother. <laughs> she didn't think that was legal. She was really uh, religious and she wanted to make sure that we were married. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dad come and get me and uh, we went in Rome we were in the room where I got on a plane to come to the United States, and Dad was with me. And we got uh, the United States, and I didn't know, or Dad didn't know either, if they're going to let me come through there and Ellis Island. But uh, it was uh, an American general Council, I don't know the full title, but he had. I still have the letter from him and the picture of you, me holding her, uh, you, and and then written, whatever he read, there is still there. there. Uh, that's how I got into the United States. The and you became a naturalized citizen, you're a yes, citizen. Yes, I was here. We lived, we lived in Iowa, in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and I was here about five years, and when it was six years, then I got my papers, the United States of America, uh, and I was naturalized, and that's how I stayed in the United States. and. It's been now since 1948 in May. That's 
Seventy when, years. Yeah. Yeah. So that's uh, how I I study. I didn't do so hard, but I study and own stuff, and they give me the the papers. I had to be here five years before I could have even apply. Mm -hmm. And I was here about six years when I got my papers and so on. How wonderful. Well, thank you for telling me the story again. And, of course, our viewers are hearing it for the first time. So thank you. <laughs> okay, and that's how you are here and me here. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the show. What an amazing story. Um, so, Nandia, what was that like for you to do that interview with your mom? It was so fulfilling to, especially now that she's living with me, we wouldn't have had this opportunity to do an interview like mm -hmm. that because I, I would have to drive 80 miles up mm -hmm. and back and it might not be the right day or, or uh, you know, she might be not feeling as well. She's 91 years old, so wow. we have to take our, our good times and our bad times. But now that she's living with me, we're together every day and we were able to set it up and be ready to do the interview. Mm -hmm. And she was happy to do it and that made me happy. That's wonderful. That's I'm continually reminded of her strength mm -hmm. in doing this, mm -hmm. in, in looking at mm -hmm. her future and what she had to do. Was it um, her coming to the United States then with her GI husband? Mm -hmm. That was another exciting adventure. I hope that you can document that at some time. Yeah, I hope we have time to get into more aspects of their story because yes. it's, it's so interesting on both sides, absolutely. Did you hear things from her during this taping that you had never heard before? Oh, you know, there was one or two things, and I, I can't think of it right now, but I, I know I raised my eyebrow, was yeah. raised like, oh, really? Mm -hmm. And it, part of it was where these roads were, where, what that block was like that mm -hmm. she had to pass through, mm -hmm. and how it, the circumstances with the soldiers, I had always thought that uh, they were there and pointing their guns at her when she crossed, but she said she told me no. She said all their backs were to me. They were having a meeting or oh. an argument or a discussion or something. So they weren't looking oh. at me when I crossed the border. And that I never knew before. Well, so that somehow, sounds like some divine protection. Yes. Just exactly. some sort of divine exactly. protection. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. How amazing. No one well, was looking. Well, we thank you so much for sharing. We are coming to the end. Mm -hmm. Our time is up. Um, to my co-hosts, thank you so much for being here today. Nandia, mm -hmm. thank you for sharing that story and thanks to your mom for mm -hmm. just sharing that story with everyone. And to our viewers, thank you for tuning in and watching. We'll see you again at Women of the World Show. Mm -hmm.